Hello and welcome to another edition, actually a special edition of Beyond the Noise, where today you guys really get to see us talk about getting beyond that surface rhetoric about working hard and staying the course and, and uh, staying determined and figuring out how we can maneuver th through this thing called life in order to get to the places that we are trying to go. I have with me today, Miss P. Miss P, how are we today? Uh oh, they got Miss Pete cut off. Oh, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we are good now. We have Miss Pete sitting over there on the ones and twos because although she is back in action, she is not back in the studio yet. Uh, the round faced Mexican girl, she's still on the ones and twos at a remote or a satellite or whatever kind of location you want to call it. Uh, Miss Graciela Dagnino, she's going to be asking questions now. She's the biggest. Uh, Kobe Bryant fan, RIP, to one of the greatest ever in the history of Kobe Bryant fans. So if you get a gang of Kobe Bryant questions, uh, Gracie, you are limited to four total questions, two Kobe questions, so you better make them good. Uh, so that's how that goes. And the reason I'm talking about that today is because today I have with me a classmate of mine, one of the best basketball players to ever step foot on the court uh, at the home of the Frogs. He is one of the reasons to bring the TCU Horn Frogs to the uh, tournament. As a matter of fact, he is one, uh, one of the players from the first team ever to go to the tournament uh, from Horn Frog Nation. Then he played six years with Charlotte and he also played 11 years overseas, I believe in Israel. He is from South Bend, Indiana. A good friend of mine he is a humanitarian and what I mean by that is he is still living his life on the court trying to help dreams of young athletes just like himself who had dreams just like he did try to live those dreams not through you can do it and rhetoric but through a real roadmap of leadership and understanding ladies and gentlemen I have with me today a friend of mine a big-time baller uh, NBA, former NBA uh, international basketball professional. Played against three of the greats. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Lee Nalen. Appreciate it, appreciate it. What's up, brother? How we doing, man? Right, good to see you, man. Man, it's great to see you. We've been talking for a little bit now. And uh, I said, man, I got to get Lee on my show. Lee, man, you want to come to the show? What is that? So now I had to explain to him how we got him out here. And I'm super excited to talk about quite a few things. But before I do, found out you were from South Bend, Indiana, and you made your way to Texas. Man, talk to me about that transition from Indiana High School to Texas basketball. Well, I'm from South Bend, Indiana, uh, home of the Hoosiers, you know, home of Notre Dame, fighting Irish. Uh, I went to junior college out of out of high school mm -hmm. up in uh, Kansas. Where at? Butler. Man, you know how I many people we done had up in here from uh, either uh, Man, the, <laughs> Coffeeville or <laughs> Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah Butler. Conference. That's a tough conference yeah, for is. basketball and yeah, football. But I went there for two years. Uh, you know, Coach Tubbs came and recruited me from there. Uh, you know, gave me a few couple options. Told me uh, if I went came to the school that you know he would you know grant my wish and give me the ball every time. <laughs> he made it kind of simple, kind of yeah. easy for my decision to go there. So for Butler, I went to TCU, you know, played there two years. You know, we was- Yeah, you we know, linked we up, yep. <laughs> no doubt. We got it in, had a good time. Great uh, time. You know, yeah. we, we, we put TCU on the map that year. Coach Tubbs, Billy Tubbs, you know, rest in peace. Right. Uh, one of my, you know, favorite peoples to this day. Um, but we went to the tournament through, you know, you know, playing, you know, up tempo ball, we was trying to outscore everybody. So yeah. the whack was was pretty fired up back then. Yeah. Um, you know, second first year we went to uh, NCAA, you know, second year we went to the NIT. Right. We lost in the semifinal before getting to you know, to the uh, to New York to yeah. play for the championship. The so uh, yeah. after my senior year I got drafted second round to the Hornets, you know, forty third pick. Uh, Paul Silas, you know, drafted me from there. You know, now his son is a coach for the Rockets. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there because I gotta ask you something. Because I know your path now is still you you you're working in basketball, you're playing basketball, uh, you coaching and teaching basketball, but you made a stop at Butler. 
okay, what, why Butler? Why JUCO? Why not? Why not a four year school? Why not a lower division? Like what? Cause well, were I, you highly recruited? Like yeah. what was the situation? Well, coming in high school, you know, my freshman year, you know, I didn't make the team, so I, you know, I freshman year what high school? So I didn't make the team. Mm-hmm. I got cut. Um, part was skills and part was books, you know. So um, my freshman summer, you know, I went to move, came down, you know, to Austin, Texas, stayed mm-hmm. with my uncle for three or four months. He taught me how to work, you know, work ethic. Um, held me accountable. He, he taught me, you know, he was a he was a Marine Army guy, so you know he was he was a straight path guy. So he taught me, you know you know, hold myself accountable, how to work and, you yeah. know, be responsible and, you know, to grow up sooner than later, you yeah. know, because back in South Bend, you know, being in the streets and hanging out with, you know, different groups and stuff kind of stirred me a different way, kind of, you know, kind of uh, made my vision a little foggy on yeah. my path to, you know, play basketball and, and to chase my dream. Let me ask you this, man. You said something, it's kind of sitting with me. So you got cut ninth grade, but you said half a skill, Half was grades. When you say skill, was it your work or was it the actual basketball skill? It was both. Um, what What did you think you needed to work on? Or what did they man, say you needed to work on? I mean, I I mean, I really couldn't shoot. You know, my mm-hmm. my ball handling was was not that good. I wasn't that tall at the time, so I was about six two. So I was a guard, really mm-hmm. playing, you know, on the block. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was say six two freshman. I was say I wasn't that big. I was six two. Well, yeah. Man, I just turned. Back I ain't even Indiana, six two now. Yeah, <laughs> back in Indiana, six two is yeah. like five ten. You know, Words. Cause, yeah, because there's some height around there. But you saying like you're in ninth grade, you're six two, you you having problems shooting. So my question is, did you expect to make the team in the ninth grade? Well, I actually, you know, I played ball, you know, in elementary, but I was a bench warmer. So every yeah. year that I played from elementary, middle school to high school, you know, I just felt like. Maybe because I was I was cool with the guys that was that was on the team from eighth grade year going to freshman year. They're like, gonna okay, slide you in there. They're gonna get me in too. Yeah, they yeah. Get <laughs> out of here, you know, like you right, know, right, right. Go to the party, you know, we got VIP list. We all in. Yeah, we know? all we all go to the right. party. Yeah. So, so you know, coach bust my bubble. He cut yeah. me, and uh, you know, that's something I moved to Austin, and my yeah, uncle yeah. just he changed my whole life. You know, taught me how to shoot, dribble, taught me the game. You yeah. know, as much as he could in the little time that I had, but. You know, the yeah. biggest thing is I grew five to six inches that summer. So that summer? I, came, I came back from Austin, Texas, you know, 6'2 to 6'7. How did that affect what you had just learned, though? So was it to get, like, you was just learning how to shoot and you was growing and you was learning? To, what was the most important thing he taught you, the skill or the discipline to go practice the skill? Probably just the dog, really just because we was up every morning mm-hmm. running, you know, doing different stuff to where I wasn't used to it. Mm. You know, I'm like, man, what I'm doing up at six in the morning? You know, yeah. he was, running, but he was up because he was a mailman, so he was up in the air. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so he he would put me on that regiment after about two or three weeks. You know, I was smashing all the workouts. Every yeah, day. I was up waiting for him. You know, boom. Like so, hey, you just had up? to change your mind. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So, yeah. So he, he changed he changed my work ethic, the, the confidence. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just he just grew with me. Yeah, you know, as far as that summer, it was just one summer that I went. You know. How did he talk to you? Like, how did he come? Did he? Because you said he had a military yeah. background. So was well, he? He was. He was, he he was, was aggressive, but yeah. was it like with it was, respect? You know, like, how it was, was that? Firm. You know, yeah. he was aggressive, but it was firm just because I was his nephew and he didn't. Yeah, you know, he was he showing really love. Want, yeah, but yeah. it was still harsh. You know, but mm-hmm. he was. He he meant what he said. You know, once he said something, you know, if I tried him, then he would let me know that. That ain't the direction. Yeah, this you ain't you don't want to do this. It's a long summer, so yeah. I, you, know, I wanna, <laughs> you might want to do it my way. So you know, after a while, it took a while. You know, I was yeah. calling my mom every day, like, man, I want to come home. Right, right, right. You know, it, it it's something that I didn't want to do. You know, so he yeah. just made me, he held me accountable for you know for what I wanted to do later on in life. That's what I was finna ask you. So, did you love basketball in the ninth grade? Because here's the thing. I love, I've been loving baseball my whole life, man. I look, I ain't really love football. I loved how aggressive I could be in football right. and not, and get praised for it. That, that's the, I found out the root of everything, but I love baseball. I knew that from the rip. So I never really had to be pushed to do anything right. baseball related. But that's cause I knew I loved it. 
when did you fall in love with basketball? Like, when did basketball, when was it worth getting up at five? After you saw you could do it or right. when you realized that you was going Well, up? actually, I thought, you know, from Indiana, you know, first thing when you come out the wound is, is basketball. They throw you a ball. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually thought I did love it. Until, mm. until, I, until you know, my I went to live with my uncle, and I really seen that he loved it, mm. you know, because you know my my cousin, you know, he had an AAU team that he formed for him, right, and then he formed another one for me just for that summer, just to you know get me, right, get, get you ready, acclimated and yeah. up to speed with with the you know high school level, Word. but he 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 put the love in me all the way back, and again he from South Bend too, Indiana, mm -hmm. so he took his love to Austin, Texas, and you know try to get back. You know, to, to kids and right, as right. well as his own kids in the AU system. Cool, man. So we got Lee Nalon here with us talking about, you know, we're, we're, we're progressing out of his ninth grade year where he got cut. Some of our great basketball players getting cut in ninth grade. Right. I mean, it's crazy, ain't it? So <laughs> now you, you're five inches taller, okay? And you're going into, I guess, high school trials. Before we get to that, Miss P, what you got online? Questions, comments, concerns? Miss Gracie. Oh, <laughs> tell her the, the Kobe. She burning them early. Here we go. By Kobe, she <laughs> said to tell you that uh, it's too bad she could have taught you how to shoot. <laughs> hey, she can. Hey, she can. She can she, okay. But don't. I ain't gonna say she can shoot because I know what's next after that. <laughs> She's a good teacher of shooting okay. the ball. Because mm -hmm. if I say she can shoot, she going to talk about, I beat you in horse, I beat you in this. Oh, yeah. yeah, so. Okay. So, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, you know so, what I'm saying? I'm going to have to put my eyes on it. Yeah, it. so you got to see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Take a look and see what kind of skill. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What else you got, Miss P? Uh, that's it right now, yeah. so far. All so right. So far. <laughs> All right, so, hey, we got Lee with us, and we're going to talk a lot about getting our kids involved in quite a few things. But before we do, we got to get him grown up. So right now, you five inches taller and you're going into your sophomore, so your varsity year, and you have just learned how to work. Right. Talk me through that senior season. I mean, through that so, through that. So uh, uh, coming back varsity. home for the summer, you know, I get home, you know, probably by the first, second week of August, you know, school start the last last week of August. Yeah. So I get back to I get back to South Bend. My mom going crazy because she like, what you feed my son? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like he, this dude is not my son no more. Like he he's totally different. Yeah, so, who uncle is walking in? Right, so <laughs> so uh, she she went crazy about that on my uncle and my mm -hmm. uncle thought that was funny. But um, so so now I'm back in South Bend. Everybody saying, hey, man, you see Lee? Man, he man he six eight now. Like, yeah, yeah. You should see him now. So now my skill level is 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 a lot better. And, and and I grew with it, you know what I mean. So so, so you didn't feel it. awkward. You didn't feel like you had to go learn some stuff. But but actually, <clears throat> you know, I felt kind of weird just because I was taller than everybody that was taller than me when I came back. <laughs> I oh, crazy. I ain't never heard that before. Yeah. So when so when my high school coach seen me, shout out to Tom the base. When mm. he seen me, he said, "Holy." crap yeah yeah it, yeah but he said the word yeah and uh, i was like what's on he said man you really grown <laughs> you know he's like you really ready now huh? yeah so yeah i was like yeah coach i've been ready he's like no you, you no know, you haven't been yeah. ready sir <laughs> so, so uh we we plan pickup and stuff and he seen me dominating so he was like man i need you to play uh jb just to see how serious you is mm. and so that still was like a, a crush to me because i'm like man i should be straight varsity but why did you expect that like, cause you because you got Because I put the work in. Because I felt like that, that summer I put the work in, but he didn't see it. So now I got another wall I got to break down. Yeah. I got to I gotta prove to my coach that. The I work that you put the work time, in. I need to yeah. be full-time varsity because, yeah. you know, playing half JV and half varsity was like not cool back in the day. Because, right, right, right. Again, all my friends, they was playing varsity. Right. So so I'm playing two, two quarters JV, two quarters varsity. Mm -hmm. So, um. One of the games uh, we was playing against our rival, St. Joe High School, mm -hmm. and we was playing at their gym, and one of our big men got in foul trouble. So I was the next man in line, so. How'd you feel before he hit you with the uh, nail? Boy, yeah. I was just sitting there like, man, if he put me in a game, I promise I'm shooting every time. <laughs> <laughs> so so it was crazy that it, you know, the guy, uh, his name was Vaughn, he got in foul trouble, he had four fouls. So he put me in, coach, we was, he put me in for about, I think I played about five, six minutes, but I was rolling. Mm. But again, 
I only can play two quarters. Right, right, right. Because because so, of the time split. Yeah. I know. Yeah, the root. Yeah, man. So so coach had to pull me out to to. I don't mm-hmm. know. He knew something that I didn't know. So mm-hmm. I came. I'm like, coach, you take me out. He said, yeah, you only you. You only can play two quarters. But you know what the crazy part is? If you only play majority of the first quarter, you play the whole game of varsity. See, I didn't know that. I, yeah. But like, that's probably why he yanked me out so quick. But Vaughn, mm. the second half, he fired out. Mm. So I had to play the whole second half in the overtime. And I had 31, you know, hit the newspaper. Mm-hmm. That's when it actually, you know, everything opened up for me as far as just the whole game slowing down for me. I seen the work pay off. And I actually believe if you put the work in, with anything that you can that you can achieve it because I actually was on the same because you realized my it. uncle yeah mm-hmm. he put me six in the morning every day six 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 uh, for three months mm-hmm. so that right there taught me if you stay disciplined and stay locked in on what you want to do it can it can really let happen. me take that question deeper so because you you act like that right now today don't you I still to this day like my wife she'll tell you like she I'm so like locked in on just regimen because so, the consistency is what the work look like so the would reward you, is the cake and the ice cream and the and the, and the money and, mm-hmm. and everything that come with it but but the but the journey and the process is what you got to enjoy because you ain't gonna get that back again so for everybody out there especially athletes because i've been working on this because we don't we don't do, I don't like the term strength and conditioning. I'm going somewhere with that. So conditioning, everybody automatically equates that to cardio, right? Like condition, I gotta get in shape. Yeah. Shape is not conditioning. So I'm, I'm gonna say, most people think that it would be the regimen or the yeah. template that you was following. So I'm gonna ask you, do you think it was that? Or do you think that you had realized that you become conditioned to design regiments. So if I follow a regiment and I make sure it's working, I'll get exactly what I'm looking for. If we just gotta be yeah. willing to condition ourselves, not, not cardio ourselves. Right, it's, it's because that's gonna come with it. But see my uncle, he laid the blueprint for me. So and he just gave you a path. He, he, he laid the foundation for me and I took it home with me. Mm-hmm. And, and ever since then, you know, I, 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 try, to, I try to stay on that same path, but it was mm-hmm. hard because again, you got all type of stuff yeah. in your environment. I'm from a bad neighborhood to where, you know, you might walk outside guys smoking, gambling, drinking, mm-hmm. this 11 in the afternoon, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. So this is normal. So so I had all type of stuff that, that, that threw me, that tried to throw me off of what my- I But was you was conditioned, to. you had to get up at six in the morning. But, I, but my uncle laid the blueprint. Yeah. He already had my mind conditioned to where even though I might go party, but I still know that I got to get up and ch- keep chasing this path that I don't even know the, the you know, the end of the, the tunnel, if the light there or not, mm. but it's just the, the, the path that I took and the belief that something great gonna come out of that because it, it, it worked for me, you know, through high school. Yeah. So the goal to you, like, was the NBA the goal or was it, you, I'm, you hooping, so let's just try the NBA. Well, the first, First, it was just just uh, play basketball for high school because again, I'm from you know they love basketball the state of Indiana. So I grew up watching guys before me be stars on the high school floor that I wanted to play on. So you was conditioned that so, that was the way, right? So so I was I always wanted to play high school ball, and then once I played high school ball, it was steps, you know. So then I wanted to go to college. I didn't care if it was junior college. I just wanted to go to college because I wanted to be different because everybody in my neighborhood and everybody from South Bend, they would go to college and they'd be right back home the first semester. And mm. I'm like, man. So that was that was the fad back then for my for my time was go to school for a month and then you come back home and now you chilling. You now you just living off of your high school career and everybody still giving you all praise and glories like you in the NBA. So that that was another demon I had to fight to whether if I go home I'm still gonna be the man, but is that all I want? I'm gonna ask you that. So you it, you know everybody like being like man. I don't care what nobody say, and especially as athletes. A lot of kids now play sports to be like you know with their friends and stuff. Exactly. Again, when you're in high school, when you're a freshman, you see juniors and seniors. It's just nature by nature for us to to want to be like one of them. 
You mm-hmm. know, whether it's good or bad, but when you get to high school, your parents ain't your role models no more. Right, right, it's, right. It's, it's, that, it's that sophomore, junior, senior that, oh, man. With the pretty that, girl or the older yeah, girl. Got or the, the Letterman's jacket. Yeah, like, so, so you know, now, everybody laughing with all right. the time. So, so it's totally different. So my, my thing was, from, from I just wanted to get to college. If I got to college, then then maybe, you know, I have a chance to, to play in the NBA, but don't get it twisted. You know, Sean Kemp from, you know, it's out, he from mm-hmm. Indiana too. Mm-hmm. You know, Elkhart, Indiana, which is 10 minutes from South Bend, but I grew up watching him, you know, when he made it out of high, out of high school, mm-hmm. you know, he went to Kentucky, but he got in trouble, but he really got drafted out of high school. Mm-hmm. So when he made it, a guy from my town, from my area, that really gave me the strength to be like, okay, I can make it too. Stop right there. Because, and, and I'm here with Lee Nalon. We're talking about the condition and the path that you take. Because people here, professional athlete, and they automatically flash success, the privilege. You know, you got this, that, and the other. But everything you're saying is making so much sense. So the image is that of him, because you knew where he was from. He looked like you. He did what you did. And when I say look like you, I ain't talking about color. I'm talking yeah. about he. They throw you a ball, so yeah, of course you, thing I wanted to do. you have a forced relationship with basketball. You think it's yours, but if you don't like it, you, they're not gonna like you. Exactly. And that, and that's not unfair. Everybody right, knows right, that yeah. when you're going in. But I'm saying like, so with that, when you saw him, did it did it change your thought, or did it enhance your belief? Like, yo, I believe it, but now I know it. When I well, I seen him play through high school, and I knew he was a man child, but I always wanted to be not like him, but wanted to be in the same breath as him for- Wanna know how he did it. Right, so when I seen him make it to the NBA and I seen him play and he was in the playoffs playing against the Bulls in the finals and he had success and I was like, man, this the same dude that was that's from my, from my area that's making it. So it just made me just realize that it can come true if you really put your mind to it and hmm. you lock yourself down and really, you know, be selfish because that's at the end of the day, as a kid, I tell the kids now the ones I turn, I'll be like, you gotta be selfish. And they think that, you know, that's being selfish, don't, don't pass the ball. But I'm like, you gotta be selfish off the court. Just, just surround yourself around people that's either trying to make you better or chasing the same thing with you because at the end of the day, nobody that's not, that's don't chase it with you, don't understand the hunger that, and growth yeah. that you wake up to every day, like trying to chase it, chase it. They think you're weird, you know, but that's yeah. why you surround yourself around people that's chasing it with yeah. you. For everybody who has faith, belief, who work hard, grind and all that good stuff, I'm gonna put a few things together for you, just listening to what you were saying. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions, right? You from South Bend, Indiana, right? Played a little college ball, played in the NBA. You played against Michael Jordan? Yeah. Okay. Go. You, but you played against Michael Jordan, yeah. you from Indiana, young brother playing basketball, you wanted to be like Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp, where you from? Elkhart, Indiana. And he played in the NBA, right? Did he play against Michael Jordan? Yeah. See how powerful images are? Right. That's crazy, because again, I was sitting on the couch watching it with, you know, some, some of my OG guys. Mm-hmm. That, you know, they, you know, they wasn't, they wasn't chasing the same dream, but you know, they they met. They had a bit. They had a good impact in my life, just because, even though you know they was making their money the way they wanted to, they never try to force me to do it, or never try to make me, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, ride down with them. You know, what mm-hmm. I mean, it was always, hey, you know, hey, young fella, you need to, you know, go that way. They life wasn't hell. your life, right? And they, they knew, understood they knew, that they they seen the dream before before I seen it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of OG guys that I go back home, they're like, man, I knew you was gonna make it, man. You was different. You know, and I believe them because, again, from day one, when they didn't even know I was, I didn't even know I was going to make the team, they was like, man, you can make it, you can make it. You want to know what's crazy? <clears throat> it's so funny how we can see that somebody else different, but we don't see the difference in us. Right. We'll never see it. Yeah. I don't know what made me so different. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got people in my office, and I tell them all the time, man, y'all different, man. Y'all are different, kind of, like, because I, I can step back and be like, I don't know how y'all ended up hanging over me, but I don't deserve how, like the skill right. or the passion that I'm watching. So let's go straight to the NBA. So I played, get, I get drafted. played against the GOAT, drafted the whole night. So I get to the NBA, you know, I'm leaving TCU. Um, it was it was like, a, 
I was already in the NBA when I was at TCU because it was like I got, you know, all the attention. You know, everybody was around, wanted to be around me, whatever. So once I got to the NBA, it was like I didn't know this until I got there. When you get there, you got to start all over again. <laughs> Don't bring your high school accolades like, to college. Man. Don't bring your college accolades like, man, to the pros. Look, I, I, Leave I your moments where right. they were. Did yeah. nobody respect me? You know, I was carrying bags. You know, I was I was a rookie. Yeah. I, was, I felt like you know I was a freshman again. So mm -hmm. I had to 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 gain and had to get the respect from the guys on the team by just by just a, you know competing in practice. So in practice every day. You know, I was I was busting. You know, I was hitting everybody. Mm -hmm. Come game time, you know, Coach Silas, you know, he walked right past me on the bench. I'm like, man, this this how it is. Like this the NBA. Yeah. So it, it really like it really changed my mindset to 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 I had to had to grind all over. It was day one again. It felt like I was back with my uncle again. But what kind of grind was it? The same kind of physical grind when you first got to the NBA. Right. It was more. It was more. It was more so. Uh, just the um, the process. They because again they knew what it looked like. I didn't. They were conditioned. Right. So they wanted to see what type of what type of kid I was coming to work every day. Was he one early? Was Could he late? Fit? Right. What was is he hanging out? Is he doing this? So I learned it late, but I, I learned it through just grinding and believing that when I get my shot that I had to make the best out of it. So every game, the coach and some of the old guys on the team would say, young fella, stay ready. I'm like, man, I'm ready. What you talking about? But yeah. they said that for like two, three months. Because they've been watching. Stay ready, stay ready. So I'm like, oh, whatever. So one game, you know, Jamal Mashburn get hurt. Lee. That was my shot. I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Yep. You know, come on, MF. You know, yep. Coach Silas, he, he, he real. He 100. He'll yep. cuss you out. He yep. do all that. So he's like, come on, MF, go on in the game. So mm -hmm. so I go in the game, and, you know, first three, four, my first two or three shots go straight in. Like, I was just – I I just knew I was built for that moment. But How'd you he, know? Because I was conditioning from day one to, to where, to where the, the journey I took, that's what made me – Feel like you I belong there. That I yeah. can play on that level. So once I learned that the NBA blueprint, as far as you got to be here, you got to do this because you got to look the part. Once you look the part, they know you can play. You wouldn't. That's why. You, that's why they picked you. Right. You wouldn't even be there if they think you didn't play. So I just had to learn the blueprint of the NBA. Once I did that, you know, Mashburn he got hurt again, and I was starting played against him day my first time. Ever. How was that? It was it was crazy because I I actually when he retired I was like man I can get a chance to play against him. hopefully I can see him because I always wore his shoes mm -hmm. so uh, the the game Mashburn got hurt it was uh, I think no it wasn't a back to back we had a day off so the next day in practice Coach Silas didn't tell nobody who was starting he just was mixing the lineups up but he still had the four guys where he would. You know, throw me in there and then throw another Trying to guy. see the fits. Right, see right. How, who fit see, what. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I hope y'all listening to that. So the next day at shoot around, you know, uh, we on the court. Really, like when you when you got home game in the NBA, the the visiting team shoot first. Mm -hmm. So so they on the court first. Then second, you know, we, we come on the, the home team comes. So, you know, a shoot around in the NBA, like, I don't want to say that, but because the kids is listening, but yeah. shoot arounds in the NBA is like nothing. Yeah, like you walk in there with flip flops on if you want to, hoodie, like yeah, literally. because they like pros, they you know right. they've already put that work right, in. Right, right. So kids, don't get it twisted. You gotta you put gotta that put that the work, work in. in. You know they yep. pay, they do. So don't think you NBA if you you know you still in high school. So you still got to work. Yes. So, so we go to shoot around, and I'm just geek because my God. MJ on the floor. Yeah. So at home, you know, I purposely put some J's on, you know. But the ones I really liked, I ain't yeah. had no shoe strings in them, mm -hmm. you know. But again, the the shoot around was, it was nothing. You know, you just mm -hmm. had to wear, you know, your shoot around you stuff. Yeah. But you didn't even have to wear your game shoes or nothing. You can have flip flops on because we really just walked through stuff. Mm -hmm. So I get on the court. As I'm walking on the court, they coming off. I try to make sure I try to catch him before he get mm -hmm. up the court. Because I just wanted to see, I wanted to I size move. him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. I want, because that was always my thing. One of my OGs from from back in in my town, he said, 
you always size a guy up. You know what I'm saying? With like, yeah. even on, on fights, anything, like mm-hmm. you size him up, see if you can get with him. Yeah, he calculate. So, right, so yeah. MJ coming off the court, I'm walking on, and but I'll never forget this. <laughs> we walking off, and I, I think they probably knew who was starting. I think the Wizards knew who was starting, but because mm-hmm. you, you had Cause to they hand over the right, call. Right, yeah. Coach Silas didn't tell us. We didn't never know really it took game. Mm-hmm. You walk He's in, you see the up. up there. Mm-hmm. So I'm coming off. I'm coming on the court. He coming off. First thing he said to me, he said, next time you wear my shoes, put some shoe strings in them. <laughs> I looked at him like, okay, okay. <laughs> Like, he sized this, you up. Right. Yeah. Like he threw the first punch. Yeah. I was like, whoa. So that's what, and then I heard a lot of stories before I even played against time. He talked trash all the time. So mm-hmm. that right there started the relationship of me and MJ as far as the competitive side. So after that, you know, we shooting around. I'm I'm freaking out because he talked to me. Yeah, 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 he talked to me. So uh I go back home, come back to the get to come back to the gym, and I see my name starting on MJ. Man, I freaked. <laughs> and it was on TNT. So I'm freaked out now. So it's, like, so it's not. I'm, I'm almost like, man, look, coach, I ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, wow. Like, I'm playing against this dude. That, that guy, I, yeah. yeah. Like, I want to be king. like Mike. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, you know, we played. We jumped before jump ball, you know. In the NBA, they tell you line up by the man that you guard. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, just because if they want to tip, we don't want no guards. On the beat, like, yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm I'm right next to him. Again, I got Jordans on, but they got shoe strings in them, so mm-hmm. they're tied. So we get ready, you know, to play the game, and you know he doing his thing, dapping everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm just what's sitting there waiting on him to come by. Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he come over by me, and uh, you know I'm just grabbing my shorts, and I'm just waiting for them to jump ball. And I looked at him, and I said, I got shoe strings in these. <laughs> Man, he said, boy. <laughs> so after that, you know, we, we went at it. Yeah. He, I had a good game. I had like 18. He had, mm-hmm. uh, I think he had 20. But that right there, after the game, he came up to me. Mm-hmm. And showed respect. Said, then yeah. he gave me his shoes, signed his shoes, and gave them to me. So yeah. that was that was the, the MJ story for the first time. But he 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 definitely uh, did that solidify, he rocked my boat. Did that solidify the fact that you knew, not you believe, that you belong? Like, I, yeah, like once, I'm once supposed MJ, to be a, Yeah, once he talked to me yeah. and he actually acknowledged me. Because right. again, But I was that fear? It, was, it wasn't that, it wasn't fear. It was just, it was It was like a dream that came true. Like, so it was surreal. It yeah. was like, I'm but, playing against that guy. But yeah. I always play the, I tell, I tell, you know, my family, friends, everything. I always play the game just so that the great ones, when I walk around, they know who I am. Mm. Like now, I go back to All Star Weekend, stuff like that, I see all the older guys, and they call me Lee, now, you know? Mm-hmm. The guys I never thought knew me. Mm-hmm. So, so I play the game f- for, for that, just the respect of the older guys and my peers, because again, the money gonna come if you're really putting a show on. So mm-hmm. so for the, a lot of kids out there, just play the game just, just to play it and don't play it for it for the money because if you that good, then the money gonna find you. But just never, you know, never just chase it for the money because again, that's gonna run out. Hmm. We are here with my man Lee. Ah, oh, man, this is fantastic. Miss P, what do you see online? What questions you got to tell Gracie? She got one more COVID <laughs> question left, go. <laughs> Actually, Gracie is saving her question. I'm not right. sure why, but All she's right. saving the question. But we have several people laughing at your story. Mm-hmm. That's the MJ story. Oh, um, and then when you when you mentioned, um, I have laces in my shoes. Yeah. Uh, oh, they were like, oh yeah, you got him, got yeah. him, got yeah. him. <laughs> I got and then someone said, Lee Gerania, Gerana, Naylon Earl. That's a family member. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that she stalking She put her. your business out there. Yeah, she, uh, <laughs> what's up, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, you played against the GOAT. Yeah. That means you played against Kobe. Yeah, I played against Kobe. What that so, like? so I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a rewind a little bit. Yeah. So, coming out of TCU, um, again, I, I had the blueprint, but I still, you know, wasn't fully a uh, adult yet growing what, up. What do you mean? I, st- I made mistakes as a kid when I was at TCU that uh, actually it's going to lead to this story. Okay. So uh, a couple of buddies of mine, uh, I get drafted. Um, I'm living in Wichita, Kansas. Mm-hmm. And um, 
I have a, I, I, you know, when you get drafted, you, your first, you always want a car. Mm -hmm. So my dream car was a, you know, was a Suburban. Mm -hmm. So I, I got a Suburban put, you, you know, know them young cats ain't gonna realize how, how cool that was right, back man, you know in 99 screens, 2000 screen you, you know what i'm saying blaze yeah, you know what i'm like saying they don't know nothing they about, don't know nothing about that man yeah, you know what i'm so, saying so i get so, it <laughs> so so uh I, I, I come back from wichita i drive i drive my truck up to fort worth because the guy that actually did it was in fort worth so yeah and a couple of my tvs was messed up so i took a road trip. was it all 35 yeah you talking about my man? Uh, Off of Forest Hill. Oh, yeah, Forest Hill. Yep, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he was nice. He was a monster. I don't know where he at now, though. Yeah, man. So anyway, uh, so I came to Fort Worth, um, and a couple guys from the team, you know, we hung out. You know, you know, we, yeah. we come, to, come to your, come to like, your form. Come to the city, hang out. Yeah, yeah. Hang out with your old teammates. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I had a couple rooms, and uh, again, I was only here just to get my, my TVs fixed, and then I was going to go back to Wichita. Mm -hmm. So, um, I dropped my truck off, go back to the hotel. Um, they called, the, the guy called and said, hey, your truck's done. So I, I tell the guys, hey, listen, wait till I get back. Don't be smoking in the hotel room and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So they're oh, okay, okay. But again, mind you, these guys ain't chasing it with me. Right. They're just there they're, with you. Right. They they yeah. reaping the benefits now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again. But they're the not kids, bad guys. Right, right. Now so, they're chasing their own yeah, dreams I'll, now. I'll, Don't get it yeah, twisted. They're I in need, college. Yeah. But they ain't on the level that I'm on yet. So let me know? let me interject in that. Like I, I want people to understand because that's why I like when you talk about this stuff. It ain't absolute. It ain't either right, or. It ain't right. like you got a room full of terrible people right, and right, a right, good right. dude calling. Right. Nah, everybody. Everybody's it, chasing. Good but intention. I'm, I'm, we looking but for I'm something already different. They looking for something right. different. You know, we looking this way, that right, way. Right. Don't matter where you at. Right. You just gotta understand. Everybody ain't bad. Just because when stories of the situation, are yeah, you it, know it, what I'm they, saying. They get, they get put in a different situation, and everybody think they're bad just right, because right. you know the newspaper. Their job is to make you look bad, right? You know that's their job. You know to get a hit to story. get a story, right? Yeah. So I told the guys, listen, this way till I get back. When we get in the truck, we can ride and smoke. I don't mm -hmm. want to smoke in a hotel because again, I just got drafted. Right, right, right. So I'm like, I, it's you no got problem. something to lose, right? Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so uh, I get back with the truck. I I get to the hotel in the lobby. And the whole it just smelled like weed. So Fogged like, up. Oh man! So I get in the room, and uh, I'm I'm telling them why y'all didn't wait mm -hmm. to to burn until until we get in the truck. Mm -hmm. So by the time you know everybody's starting to you know make up their stories, you know the police knocked on the door. Mm -hmm. So when the police knocked on the door, you know the first thing where I'm from, when the police come around, you run. Why is that? Because you know you know when you're growing up in bad neighborhoods, you know you see a lot of cops, you know bully. You know, kids and, and, and you know, it's all type of brutalities and in, in neighborhoods. With, just with condition the, 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 yeah, so that yeah. I was just that's just the that's what I was the norm for me growing mm -hmm. up is when you see a cop, you run. So um, they knocked on the door, and of course, everybody ran, jumped out the window. Mm -hmm. So when we jumped out the window, you know, it was already four or five of them downstairs, cops waiting on loaded. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, man. So you know, they, they took us, they took you know the main guys mm -hmm. downtown, but mm -hmm. they didn't charge us with nothing. Mm -hmm. So it was just- They just needed thing. a story. Exactly. So they mm -hmm. knew it was me, then they, you know, they wrote a big story. So um, I get out, you know, um, the GM and the owner and uh, Paul Silas mm -hmm. from the Hornets, they all called me on the three and was like, hey, you know, we don't want you to come to camp this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man. I was bummed out, so so uh, there's like next year come back, you know, go to come. Because they camp, needed whatever. to, to they needed, settle. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They didn't want no new stories because Bobby Fields, you know, he had passed away and stuff right. like that. So it had they had a lot of stuff they was they was dealing with too at the time. So let's live right there though. They asked you not to come back. What did that mean to you? I mean, I, I that I had to I had to read I had to start my blueprint all over again. Mm -hmm. You know, like I had to. I had to rebuild my house, you know, so to speak. But you my had foundation, a foundation. Yeah, already. the foundation was there, but I had to, it's like my house got caught on fire. Mm -hmm. Now I got to rebuild the whole house over again. I'm finna ask you some questions because I went through similar stuff. Uh, different avenue, older cat, you know, 29 years old, DWI, coaching at a spot. It instantly, everything changed for me, instantly. Sto but they wrote a great story that right. wasn't very accurate, but it was a great story. Now, 
you how long did it take what did you go through was it a lot of blame was it a lot of excuse yeah. did you feel bad about you did you feel sorry for yourself or I how long did it take to get out of that it just <clears throat> it took it really like i i would i it's it's funny but that's this type of dude i am i really wasn't mad at them mm -hmm. because again you know, I put myself in that position. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had to rebuild the relationship and the trust into the, you know, the Hornets organization. Mm -hmm. So my agent called, he was like, hey, look, I got a couple opportunities for you to play overseas. I'm like, man, I'm not going overseas. Hmm. He like, man, you, shh, this only way you gonna, you know, get your get your relationship or, or rekindle your career. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, I said, do I really? Have? He's like, yeah, because back then it wasn't no G League. Mm -hmm. You know, CBA, but they was making nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just got drafted, so I still had a, I had some juice to where I could make it some decent money overseas. So I mm -hmm. went to Italy. So when, mm -hmm. I, went, when I went to Italy, um, I was up there maybe maybe two, three weeks, and, and the coach and the owner, the GM, they came to me. They loved me because mm -hmm. I was a man on the team. So they came to me as like, hey, what do you feel about uh, – uh, Jelly Bean Bryant. I was like, what you mean? It's like, well, we thinking about uh, having him, you know, put put ownership in the team. Mm. So I'm like, Jelly. I said, the only Jelly Bean Bryant I know is the one to play for the Sixers. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, one. Yeah, that's yeah. Him, that's him. <laughs> I said, that's Kobe Bryant. Dad. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so make a long story short, you know, Kobe Dad bought put he put money put in stake the into the game. Yeah, it did yeah. So, so yeah. when he did that. You know, he flew down to mm. Italy. He was up there for about four or five months. Still thought he had game. Still was trying yeah, to practice yeah, yeah. with us. You know, so, but I was so homesick. He made me actually, if it wasn't for him, I would have left a month out of, after, you know, a month before the season even started. Because, you know, you had preseason, mm -hmm. then you had regular season. But he, uh, Mr. Bryan, he made everything, like, Felt like it, I was, I was a I part had somebody, of had somebody yeah. from the states I can talk to, I can relate to. Because again, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't speak in Italian, so mm -hmm. I wasn't really hanging out with nobody, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, we only had one other American on the team, and so you was the star, and you right. was literally the lone star. You felt alone. Yes. Say, man, I got to talk about this, and I think this is good for all athletes to hear this, especially in transitions. Like you said, you can't bring your accolades to your transition, but. The biggest thing for that I've learned through all my classmates, teammates, it's not necessarily being cut or getting in trouble. It's not the or feeling like it's the failure. It's the detach. It's the detachment. Right. Like it ain't that we ain't the man no more. This it's you don't feel a part of something. Right. And I think it's important for kids to understand that all these paths are gonna break off. Like we know that because we live in them. Right. Like we're not just saying that, but. You you have to be okay with no longer being a part of that. Yeah. And because that detachment, when I got cut, it wasn't the getting cut. I knew I could play or else they wouldn't ask me to come there. Like I never I never blamed uh, politics or injury or, this, or skill. Like, yo, everything I wasn't good enough to oh, stay. Yeah, I was good enough to play. I just wasn't good enough to stay. But when I wasn't, I, I wasn't attached to nothing. Right. I had no team, no no group, no club, no gang. You know, I was just Greg worker guy, and that's okay if I if I'm working with a team. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you so, feel a part of something. But yeah. Um. So once all that happened, you know, I stayed the whole season. You know, um, I played to real. I averaged like 25 a game. So I came back to to the Hornets. Mm -hmm. Lost Silas brought me in the camp, and um. That's when I made the team. So my so my second year, um, we was we was in L.A. because uh, when you when you're on the East Coast, <coughs> you take a, a West Coast trip. Mm -hmm. So you play like five of the teams on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So you're there for like two weeks. So we was we have we was on the West Coast trip, and our last stop was in L.A. Mm -hmm. So um, when we got to L.A. You know, I had a message on my on my hotel phone, and it was it was from it was from Mr. Bryant. <laughs> you know, he was like, he was like, "Hey, yo, I see I see you guys play my son tonight. This yeah. and this. Uh, uh, give me a call. This and this." So so I called him, and uh, he was like, "Hey, 
after the game, I want you to meet my son. This and this, this, this was this was crazy. Eight Kobe, mm-hmm. not twenty four. Yeah, not twenty four. You know, so he yeah. was still trying to figure himself yeah, out. Yeah, he too. was. Yeah, letting so, the ability do yeah, the work. But he went yeah. nuts on us that game. But <laughs> so <laughs> after after the, after the game, uh, I we was walking out, and uh, of course, uh, Mr. Brown was he was at my lock. He was at the. Um, the locker room waiting on me mm-hmm. to come out. So when I came out, you know, he walked me down. Hey, good to see you. You know, we was just talking yeah, about yeah. Italy, this and this, this and that. And uh, Kobe came out and uh, he was like, hey, what's up? And he was like, hey, Kobe, this is the one I was talking about in Italy, this and this. So it kind of made me feel good that his dad was talking yeah, to Kobe about respect. me. Yeah. Italy. So the whole, he said, yeah, you know, when I was in Italy, I called Kobe and be like, hey, we got American, man, this, he NBA. Yeah. So you're going to see him in a minute, this and that. So yeah. it kind of made me feel good that, you know, he was talking to his son about me. But yeah. after that, you know, every time I went to LA, uh, after the games, you know, I talked to Kobe for a little bit. Hey, what's up? He gave me he gave me a pair of his shoes, he signed yeah. for me. So it was always respect and I always loved man. him, but I always reached out to man. him, you know. Man, so you have transitioned, you, man, you live a serious life coming from South Bend, Indiana, and right. we transitioned into being a grown up and you still on the court. Yeah, still on the court. What uh, are you doing now? But talk to the people about why you know these things about the athletes, how you, you've taken all of those experiences and moved them towards your career. What what are you doing now? So now, um, you know, I played, you know, two seasons in the big three. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out shout to Ice Cube for, uh, <laughs> you know, putting that out there. Um, but, you know, back in Wichita, I started a little bit just training with one or two kids. Mm-hmm. I really wasn't trying to grow too much. I just wanted to see. If, this, if I really had a passion and love for it before mm-hmm. I try to build something. So why is that important? Because I, I feel like just me playing at a high level, you never cheat the game or you cheat the kid, you know? And again, you should always think about the kid and not about the money, you know? Mm-hmm. So I had a couple of kids, I wasn't charging them much. I was just wanting to see if I had the passion and the, and the fire to do it. And once I did that, you know, one of the kids got better. So the, the mom came to me and was like, hey, can you, you know, can you train my kid every day? Because it was just, you know, once a week. Yeah, yeah. So, and I was like, yeah. So it, it actually, I it, he grew with me as well as my training grew. Yeah. You know? And yeah. Yeah. he still he stuck with me for two, three years. And I got him to, you know, a, I got him to a full ride scholarship to college. How did you do that? Like through just the athletic stuff? He had the sports. I mean, I mean, he had the academic stuff. Well, he, had, he had the grades and stuff. But you blueprinted his direction. Yeah, right? he was at Sunrise okay. Christian, which is gotcha, a big gotcha. school in Wichita. Yeah. So he, he played there. Um, mm. I got him a scholarship to college. Once mm. I seen that and I seen how happy his mom was, because again, you know, his parents, they had money, but it's not, it's not the same when you when you get a full ride than your parents paying for it. You know? Why is it not? Please because help people understand why we get so upset and yeah. offended with just because, why why is it not? Because when, when you get a scholarship, it's like um, you 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 work for it or, or you you was chasing it, you know, from freshman all the way through senior school. But when you have to pay for when you have to pay for it, then it's like. Uh, it's not a passion. It's, it, it's just it's something that you're working for, but you're not really into it because you know your parents is paying for it. You know, so you're not really you, you're not really knowing the importance of of education and working hard when you don't get that scholarship because you're gonna be on campus with guys that's you know their parents paying for school. Y'all gonna be partying, hanging, drinking, doing this and that. So let me give you the flip side of that, so people do because I get it and you're right. On the other side of that, sometimes you outwork the goal. So you 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 part time and full time and some time, and then you had no time in school because you got to pay for the time you don't spend right. in school. So you grinding out all this work to pay for a goal you can't. You're not exactly. even gonna understand you know, how to reach. You don't, you don't really. I mean, appreciate it as much as if you're chasing it through high school and you know for sure you're going to college because you put yeah. you setting yourself up to go there. Right. When you don't set yourself up to go there, but you still got grades and you got parents with money, it's different because mm-hmm. I mean, that's your parents going to college. That ain't huh. you going to college. You right. know? So a lot of these kids out here living off their parents for so much for forever. It's like it's gonna run out. And then once once your parents ain't got money, you ain't got nothing to fall back on. So mm-hmm. it's always good to have your own. Yeah, it's good to live off mom and dad, but after a while, you know, it's time to leave that nest. Got grow up a little bit, or the world gonna grow you up a lot of right. bit. I know. So now, uh, 
So I I was I actually got real real serious with training and you know finished my degree. Mm -hmm. You know, so I got my degree and finished that, and I moved down here to, mm -hmm. to Fort Worth, Texas, to to actually chase it harder because I felt like um, this was a bigger piece of the pie than than Wichita is a small. It's like mm -hmm. one slice of pie. You yeah. know, everybody eating off one pie. So one you one slice. Yeah, you know, I want the whole pie. I don't want just one slice. Meaning that I want to help more kids than just you know um, a handful. You know, I, I got I got yeah. so so much around here, so much, so many kids I can touch that I feel like coming back here will help me grow my, you know, my business as well as the knowledge and kids. So before I ask the crowd for their last uh, round of statements of questions, uh, that what he just said is literal because you started with one or two and you have literally grown into an unsigned senior camp right. style to team right. a competitive uh, squad to Tell them about that, and then I'll tell them what the next step is, if you don't mind. So uh, when I moved down here, uh, I, I was still, you know, trying to find different kids I could that I can work out that I can actually let people know that this is what I do. So I ran into a kid that was a he was a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. He really wasn't. He has never been coached until he met me, but he was playing ball. And you know, again, a lot of kids think that just because you're on the team and you're playing ball, that that's basketball. Mm. You know, and it's not so I you know we, he he trusted me and his parents trusted me to help him you know he wanted to go to his dream is to go play, play college ball kind of like mine mm -hmm. but he had grades he just didn't have a skill mm. so he got with me now he's still with me but I built the unsigned senior team because of him because I wanted to help him mm. so he one turned into 13 Help yeah. is powerful, ain't it? Right. So one turned into 13, 13 turned into 26. Mm -hmm. Now this is the second year mm -hmm. of, of we'll have the unsigned senior team uh, for all seniors in the area, DFW area, if y'all need, you know, um, a, a second a second chance, a second shot, they'll reach out to me. I, I, I definitely, this is something that you'll never be used to and nothing that you never did before in high school as far as the workouts and the knowledge and stuff that I, you know, bring to the table. but. That, that was the reason why I had the unsigned senior team because of the kid that, you know, I felt like he got cheated, you know, his whole high school career. And now I felt like it was up to me to try to help him, try to find the college to where he can start and we can try to build him up to where he can actually reach D1 status. Yeah. So you go from helping a couple of kids to helping 26 try to find a school to now we're working on building an academy so we have more than 26 trying to find a school but a real funnel system of athletes who we increase the skill and then teach them how to get that scholarship either athletically on or academically on and off the court it's a lifestyle first before yeah. you get on the court you got to have your off the court ready and have it in line because again you know the game is mental you know, at the, the skill level, everybody got skill, but the, the strongest mentally person always win, you know, you know, nine yeah. times out of 10. So you gotta have your, you know, your, your, your off the court stuff together yeah. before you can even attack the on the court stuff. So now I go back to the original question. When did you realize you loved the game? My, my junior year. Mm -hmm. We uh we lost in the semifinals and that's mm -hmm. the first time I cried mm -hmm. over over basketball. So what what did you feel? I felt like the, all the work that I put in it didn't pay off, mm -hmm. you know. But then I understand that you know one person don't make a team. Mm -hmm. You know it took it took a whole team and I felt like uh we accomplished something as a team that mm -hmm. you know that we can build on for the for my senior year. You know, which would led us to winning the state champion, winning the state title my senior year. So it brought y'all, it made y'all respectable. Right. So, so, man, that's big time. Uh, Miss P, what you got online? Oh, there's a lot now. Uh, let's see. So, Tommy and the, uh, I think it's the Bates. Three. Yeah. That's they all coach. said they're proud of you. Yeah, that's my coach. Love you, coach. <laughs> uh, now, Gracie has her question. All right. Here we go. Who was the most fun to play against, team and individual? Who did you learn the most from off the court? The most, uh, the team, uh, probably the Lakers, just because 
when you got to LA, it was like, it was like a show. Like they turned the lights down in the stands and you, it was just like you was on stage performing. And I, I love that just because I always felt like we was on the stage performing or, or dancing. You know, when I, uh, growing up, I was in a dance group. You know, we, we, we uh, called TOG. We used to dance against everybody's like three or four of us. So I always felt like I was on the stage. So the, the Lakers actually brought me back to child days to where I was performing. So the I would say the Lakers and uh, the fun is to play against. Um, Whoever probably, you scored the most points against. Probably, <laughs> yeah, but probably Allen Iverson just because, oh! just because he, was, uh, he was somebody that, you know, when I was in junior college, he was at Georgetown, and mm. I just was like, he's a little pit. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to see him in action, and once I seen him in action, I was like, man, this dude is incredible. Mm. Like from hanging out all night to, to come in the gym and give you 50, like with nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most, uh, the guy off the court that, that probably taught me the most, or, or actually took the time out to spend with me was uh, probably David Wesley. Hmm. My teammate in the Hornets. Yeah. Shout out to David Wesley. Uh, we used to go eat all the time. He used to, you know, try to show me how to work. But well, again, why, why do you think he did that? What, what do you think that was about? What do you think when the older cat like, I think take, takes you under their wing? Because they was they was they was in my shoes before, and then they had somebody do it to them. So it's kind of like paying respect. Yeah, it's kind of like okay, now it's your turn to do this. Mm -hmm. Now it's your turn to do, you know, so it was just passing the torch, mm -hmm. basically. And and basically he was just trying to show me this how you need to work in, to, to, in order to stay here. Mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. probably David Wesley. Right on. All right, there's another one from Mario Falcon. Mm -hmm. um, how, what, how has the NBA changed since this pandemic? Um, well, for one, you, you everybody got to be so spread it out. Like mm -hmm. when I see the bench, ain't no togetherness no more. Mm -hmm. So what that do is that divides the locker room immediately because you ain't rubbing shoulders with guys. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just as far as the play, you see a lot of guys is, is now is looking for fouls than just looking for the rim. You know, they a lot of guys drive to the basket and before they even get touched, they are already looking to make a move as far as to show the ref that they they got hit. Mm. So I would just think it's, it's more of the anticipation of the guys is getting hit and wanting, you know, the foul call before even mm. shooting it. So I just think it got a little bit softer, but I like it though, but it's just because it's different. It, it's definitely not the same when I play, but it's different meaning that um, the commissioner wants he wants the score to be he wants the score to be ran up instead of you know a grind out East Coast. He wants the West Coast on the East Coast as well as you know the West Coast being out in the West. So he, he trying to make it more exciting, which is good because again it brings more fan, it brings more money. I get it, but um, it's definitely it's definitely tougher now that you got to really really concentrate on. Uh, mm. Your health, mm. you know, who you yeah. surround yourself around, because now you get, you masked up. So yeah. it's 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 it's, to, it's a total different game, Mario. It, it's it's interesting you say that because we were talking about and uh, uh, Bo even brought it up, man. It's it's really hard to to build trust in the locker room when you can't when you divide it. Yeah, from, when from and, and then you can't look a man in his eyes and say, hey, look, man, you got to figure this out, right. or you know, you don't you don't go to dinner, or you don't go to their house for yeah. Thanksgiving, or you don't. You know, you're getting ready to go to a bowl game and you with that family, or you know, you get ready to go to a tournament and them your people. It's but definitely different. It's so hard to build like that. Um, but we're maneuvering through that. It won't be like that forever. We right. here with uh, Lee Nalen, who has had an outstanding, extraordinary career and is extending that career to these young athletes. And like I said earlier, we uh, plan on building that, and we'll talk about that a lot uh, in the upcoming days. But we want to be able to give these kids the best opportunity we can let's leave the people with something you go then i go and then we go so if you had something that you wanted to leave the athletes the parents the coaches you wanted to leave them with a word uh, that you know they can take with them what would you say to them uh, uh probably for the kids i'll say uh you know keep chasing you know in in school it's a lot of bullies that you know that don't want to see you know different kids make it you know 
I experienced a lot of bullying in school, you know, especially if you're starting to take off on, in the sport that you're in, whether it's baseball, football. If you woke up one morning and you just, everything you did on the court or on the baseball field or wherever the track was good and you just know that you're feeling like you're taking off, don't never let these kids in, that's, that's, that's in your locker room or in your classroom tell you that you know, you suck or you this and that. They, they just want to be like you. So never let no kid tell you you can't be something you want. And for the parents, just trust your kid. You you, 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 you got to trust your kid to grow up, you know, at a young age. Because nowadays, um, we expect our kids to grow up early. You know, you got guys in the NBA 19, 18, 17 years old, you know. So I would say, kid, for the parents, just, just – help your kid grow up faster i'm gonna leave everybody with this i, I think it's important that we um, we really focus on teaching people how because uh, teaching if we can teach them how that means we got to learn it that means we have to take the time to understand how the second part is man i never and just you taught me a lot in this hour and i don't think you actually loved the game i think it was the respect yeah that was the most important thing to you and that's why you worked the way you did. And that's why what Mike thought. And that's why what your teammates thought. So the, you were conditioned for respect from your uncle. Like, if you really think about it, like, at the end of the day, you're a man. So you're going to carry yourself as such. Right. And you're going to be seen as such. So if we don't chase the goal and we max out the skill for a reason bigger than us, uh, that's not tangible. Everything come out. Then it all come out the way we try. No matter how difficult it is, and we just got to remember things get difficult. Just be patient. You know, a lot of kids now that they see on their phone, they see guys running and jumping and making money at their age, and they don't understand the process or the blueprint that they went through to get there. Trust me, they just didn't wake up and get drafted. They went it through. It, trust like me. So yep. just trust the process and and keep believing it and don't nothing happen overnight for sure you only see just <laughs> i'm gonna say this and we're gonna get out of here just because you just saw it don't mean it was all of a sudden exactly you know you just saw it don't make it new it wasn't all of a sudden it was just suddenly to you so with that being said man we appreciate it we appreciate having everybody shout out to the round face mexican girl who will be back with us soon <laughs> uh your prayers are with us uh shout out to the friends and family and everybody who tuned in we'll yes, see sir. you next week thank you guys appreciate it on beyond the noise